My ex-wife accused our neighbor of cess, old but I now believe she lied to cover up her cheating and destroyed his life. I, 29F, have been thinking about making this post for a long time, but I've had no idea how to put it into words or how to get the story out. This is all mostly speculation on my part, as I don't have any actual proof. Just a lot of circumstantial stuff. I'm not going to name drop any of the bases I was stationed at, or any of the people involved as I don't exactly want this story getting back to the military or affecting anyone I know personally. I just joined the military back in early 2017. No one in my family has been military and going into it, and so I was going into this blind, basically. I went to basic and met my now ex-wife. And yes, I made the stupid decision slash mistake a lot of military does in marrying someone I had known for a very short amount of time. We met in basic training, and in hindsight, I was only trying to cling to someone because I was scared of being alone and that far away from home for the first time. Nothing inappropriate ever happened between us during basic. I wasn't willing to mess up my career, but we maintained contact after basic and got married during tech school. This is where I should have taken a sign from the universe because I was set to go to an awesome base in a really cool part of the world, but getting married to her changed my orders to a very small base in the western part of the United States. Done. She arrived at the duty station first, and then I arrived there shortly after around October. We moved into a cute house and started trying to build a life together. For some context, my ex-wife had experienced some physical abuse during childhood, so she had a lot of triggers and issues I was trying to help her deal with. Nothing ever seemed to improve during our marriage, and maybe I'll sound like an asshole for this, but as the new relationship love blinders began to come off, it seemed like she played into her traumas a lot and used them for attention. She would introduce herself to people and almost immediately divulge her past. Hi, my name is underscore underscore, and this is what happened to me in my childhood. So it's like, like she thought this was the most interesting thing about her. But I digress. We spent a very short time at this base, only about eight months, during which time she spent a stint of time in a mental health facility. While she was there, I would go to visit, and one day when visiting, these girls ran up to me and told me she had been kissing a random guy in the courtyard. I asked her side, and of course I let her convince me that they were making it up and had a skewed view of what had actually happened. I should have listened to them and trusted my gut. When she finally got back from the facility, she had made a friend while there that was stationed at the same base as us. She had time off work to reacclimate, and so did he. This is a different guy from the one she had been supposedly kissing in the courtyard, Two, they started spending a lot of time together. One day she came to pick me up from work and they were together in her car. When she pulled up, he was in the front seat and she told me to get in the back. I thought it was weird since we were married, but I let it slide and just got in. They proceeded to basically ignore me and talk to each other. I had a really bad gut feeling that she was cheating on me with him, but I had no real proof besides the feeling and their weird behavior, so I let it go and tried to ignore the feeling. It's been some years now, so I don't really remember why they stopped hanging out but their hangouts eventually became less frequent and then stopped altogether. I'm going to skip forward a little to the day of the biggest incident. I was at work on a Friday evening. I was an MP. I was posted at a gate, and over the radio I heard them ask one of my flight members to drive down the road I live on because a neighbor reported seeing a man peeping in windows. The person they asked to go check it out was one of my friends. And I'm not trying to say anything bad about him here, but he was hesitant to do his job a lot. I think he loved his job, but it made him nervous, so I believe he did drive down my street, but I don't think he did much of a check to be honest. I also texted my wife after hearing that to make sure she was okay, and I don't think I heard back from her for a while. I didn't think anything of that because she was usually painting, or watching one of her TV shows, or something of that nature. And I was also preoccupied because I was at work. But he comes back across the radio and says he didn't see anything suspicious and that situation ended for the evening. A couple of days later, I was back at work again when my wife texted me and she told me that she had to tell me something. She asked me not to tell anyone and she proceeded to tell me that the neighbor had essayed her on Friday. My head started spinning and I told her she shouldn't ask me not to say anything because it was literally in my job description to be a mandatory reporter. When I said that to her, she freaked out and drove to the building where I work, got out of her car and dramatically collapsed on the stairs in front of the building, crying and basically shouted what had happened to her. The next few hours full of interviews, statements, reports, talking to higher command and being told we could move to a new base. My head was still spinning. I had never even been around a situation like this, and so I had no idea what to do except try to be there for her. A day or so later, I finally got the whole story from her. She said the neighbor had come over and come in through the garage. She asked him what he was doing there, and he replied with, You look tense. Let me rub your shoulders. And she didn't question that. She just accepted his offer. After a minute, he said it would be easier if she took her shirt off, so she did. And then he suggested it would be easier if she was laying down. 
so they moved into the guest room on the bed, and that's where she said he flipped her over and baited on her chest. Believe me, I know how unbelievable this all sounds now. At the time, I don't know why I didn't see any of the red flags in this story. Skipping forward a bit, they moved us to a new base closer to my family, as she didn't want to move closer to her family because she wasn't close with the. Moving there is when our marriage really started to deteriorate. The new squadron I was assigned to was horrible with corrupt leadership, so work life was awful. And I tried to be patient with my wife. I'd come home from work and clean the house and try to take care of everything, so she didn't have to worry with any of it. She ended up in a mental facility two more times. But overall, she never seemed to improve. My life turned into being extremely unhappy at work and coming home to a constantly trashed house, so I spent all of my time either working or cleaning. I was in a borderline Sioux. CD market L state for a long time because of how all of this was affecting my mental health. I'm going to skip around a bit because there's a lot of insignificant things that happen to don't matter too much for this story. But one day I had a friend I had made on flight and he started hanging out with my wife and I a lot. One afternoon, we were all out in town together when I told them I needed to go to two or three more stores. They didn't really want to go, so they said they were going to go back to our house to hang out. So well, I ended up finding everything I needed at one store, so I went back to the house early. So when I got there, I found the front door locked. I unlocked the door and went in and found no one in the living room except my dog. So I walked up to my dog and started to pet him, and that's when my day wife came running down the hallway from our bedroom, and she made a playful growling sound at my dog and then looked up at me and said, Oh, hey, I was just in the bedroom. And then my friend came walking about of my room down the hall, and he said, Oh, hey, I was just in the bathroom looking at my eyebrows and the mirrors. I looked at them both really weird and I felt like I was in some weird sitcom all of a sudden. I just blew past it at the time, but it never left my mind it was so fucking weird the way they acted. Now, at this time for more context, I was so unhappy in my marriage, I was honestly hoping to catch her cheating. So I knew how badly I had fucked up and I really didn't want to have to admit that to anyone. But I wanted her to give me a good reason for divorce. I know how selfish and wrong that sounds, but honestly, I was so embarrassed the way she could only ever talk about her trauma, she never had anything positive to say. Any conversation anyone ever had with her was either cringy, awkward, or she would act overtly sexual in any situation, even around my more traditional family. She was extremely controlling of me and anything I wanted to do with my time. She didn't even know how to make a funny joke. She would make odd jokes or uncomfortable ones and would get mad at everyone when no one laughed. I wanted out so bad and didn't know how to do it. Skipping forward again at this point, my head was completely out of my marriage. We were having a dinner party at my house with some of our mutual friends. She was not off work yet when most of them came over but about an hour later she got off work and was headed home. She called me on the way home because I guess she wasn't feeling good and she told me that she thought she either had a brain tumor or a blockage. I'm not gonna lie, my response was less than supportive. Because at this point I was mentally done with her and all of her ridiculous behavior. I told her that if she thought she had a brain tumor, that she should just go to the hospital and she got mad at me because I did not offer to drive her. The hospital was less than five minutes away, by the way. One of our mutual friends, now my current wife, could tell I was really over it and offered to drive her to the hospital. I continued to sit around and have a good time with our friends now. For some context, this hospital takes an incredibly long time to see walk-ins in the emergency room. So during this time I had half of a beer within a three-hour period. We were expecting her to be there upwards of six hours. She calls me after about four hours and tells me she is ready to be picked up and trying to be a responsible person. I told her that I was uncomfortable driving because I had half of a beer, and I did not realize she would come out of the hospital this soon. She absolutely blew up on me and told me. I was irresponsible and unreliable. One of my other friends offered to go pick her up and while they were gone, we decided it would be best to move the party to someone else's house because of how she was going to be when she got back from the hospital. Sadly, we did not relay this information to him fast enough so he got home before we were able to leave. My ex exploded out of the car, ran up to me, and got right in my face and started yelling at me. My friend's mom jumped to my defense. She was very drunk at the time, so it was quite funny. But she got in my ex-wife's and told her to leave me alone. My ex-wife threw a fit and then ran into the backyard. At that point, we decided to pack up as quickly as we could and leave. Keep in mind that at this point, it had been about two hours since I had had a sip of my last beer. I felt fine. I hopped in the car with one of my friends so we could leave and I hear a screaming noise. So I look over and my ex-wife is running towards my car and so I put the car in drive and started to take off as she ran up and punched my window. I made it about half a mile away and I waited to make sure that the rest of my friends made it out of there. I saw no other cars coming from that direction, so I turned around and went back. So when I got back, two of my friends were trying to reason with her in the front yard. She and her manic state tried to get in her car and drive off. They were trying to get her to get her to get out of her car. She turned the wheel very hard and almost ran over my friend as she was trying to back out. So he used his police officer voice and yelled at her to get out of her car. 
At that point, I decided it was time to call my squadron and have them send over her squadron's Fuadar's shirt, basically like a counselor slash mediator. I also called my friend that I suspected her cheating on me with and asked him to come over because they seemed to have a very close connection. I wanted her to have someone she could calmly talk to. She was removed from the house for three days so that we could both have space. When she got back home after three days, she sat down next to me on my porch and said to me, it's not going to happen until you say it, to which I replied, I want a divorce. I think I've given enough detail on my ex-wife and the situation at hand, so I'm just going to get into the other details. Fast forward to when I started confiding in my now wife. At the time, she was married, but she was also going through a rocky situation. I'm not really going to go into that because that is not what the story is about, and those details don't really matter too much. So my current wife is a very smart person. I told her basically this entire story in a lot more detail. She started to point out to me. The holes in the story and the red flags that just did not make any sense. I already had my doubts and suspicions, but hearing it from somebody else started to put it in perspective. To add one more sad detail, one of my friends went on a T, a short deployment that was only two weeks long. So when he got back, he told me that he ran into somebody from my old base and they had a message for me. So the message was that the person who had assaulted my wife had committed dollar U, hero eyed. He had eaten himself in his bathroom and before doing so, transferred everything into his wife's name including all of his money. I called my ex to inform her and her respondent was a very sarcastic okay. You couldn't have just told me this over text. I just hung up the phone and later that night she texted me saying do you think he did that to himself because of what he did to me. And I never replied to her because her responses seemed insane to me and like she was trying to seem empathetic even though she wasn't. So those responses made me start to doubt the incident even. For a little more context after we moved to the new base, she and I had flown back and forth to the old base multiple times for court proceedings. I was not allowed to sit in the courtroom during everyone's side because they considered me to be a witness. I wish I had gotten to sit in the courtroom and heard his side of the story because things just don't add up. The evidence ended up being inconclusive and the charges were dropped. Between my now wife and I, we both believe what happened is that that Friday night when someone was peeping through the window, and we think that my ex-wife knew that someone from my squadron saw what happened, or at least part of it, and she wanted to make an excuse for it before I found out that she had cheated on me with a neighbor. So, instead of just owning up to it, she decided it would be better to tell me that the neighbor had assaulted her and I believed that she hoped I wouldn't say anything and that it would just get swept under the rug. But when I reacted to it, she had to make a full-blown case out of it and go for the full story. She ended up ruining that poor man's life, his marriage, destroying his kid's life, everything. When all of this was happening, when I was still at my first base, all of my friends that I had been working with stopped talking to me. I had no idea what I had done then, and it's taken me a long time to come to this conclusion, but I think I finally know why. I believe that they think I was possibly in on it. With this much hindsight, I wouldn't blame any of them for believing that or feeling that way. I don't know how I did not see all of those red flags through every story and through all of her actions and everything that happened. I think that they believe I went along with it so that we could get out of that small base and out of that state and go somewhere better. But the complete truth for me is that I had no idea. I don't know why I couldn't see it at the time. I was just trying to be a supportive spouse, and I truly believed that something bad had happened to her. After so much time of realizing the kind of person she is and how horrible she, I no longer believe her side of the story. It's just got too many holes in it. She acted so friendly with our neighbor too. I believe she heavily flirted with him whenever I wasn't home. For the record, I finally did get confirmation after the divorce that she cheated on me. She ended up dating the guy she cheated on me with. He and I are still great friends to this day. I honestly don't care that that happened between them. It got her to stop obsessing over me as much. But when she and him finally broke up, we asked him if that day when she and him came walking out of our bedroom, if they had been doing anything and he admitted to it. That kind of put the nail in the coffin to every other suspicion I had ever had about her cheating on me. I honestly believe she had cheated on me multiple times with all of the guys, I suspected, and probably more. She is a narcissist and a very terrible person. Not to say that I'm a victim in all of this. I should have reasoned more with this and seen the flag sooner. I feel a lot of guilt over what happened called for what happened to that poor man and his family. That is why I'm writing this now, even after all this time. To any of my friends in the Air Force, if you read this post, I want you to know how sorry I am, and I really hope you believe me when I say that I had no idea at the time. I was not trying to get out of that base. The one who ended up deciding to move us across the United States was her. At the time, I was just trying to be supportive. I haven't name-dropped any bases or named-dropped any people in the story, but I'm sure the details will let you know who I am. And if my ex-wife happens to read this post, F you leave me alone, and please just let me have my peace. I didn't tell this story to dredge up anything from the past. I didn't tell this story to stir in a drama. I just still feel incredibly guilty and wanted to get it off my chest. If you have any questions about any more details, put it in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them. If you read this post all the way through, thank you. It's incredibly long.
I'm sorry. Next story. Twin sister can't have kids, so she begged me to be her surrogate. But I said no, then found out her husband blames her for their low-T baby and his family called her a merger. Excuse my errors in etiquette. I'm not a frequent to Reddit. My friend suggested I use her throwaway account to make this post. So please be gentle with me as much as strangers on the internet can be. I, Celeste, 30F, have an identical twin sister, we'll call her Stacy for the sake of the story. Our mother unfortunately passed in child labor and we were raised by our father. Stacy has been married to Jeff for eight years, I've been in a relationship with Mike for three years now. One thing I've always known about my sister is that she wanted to be a mom. Even when we were children she was always thinking about wedding ideas, nursery themes, baby names, etc. I was always more focused on books and having fun. I am now a flight attendant. I am also attempting to become a published author. So my sister has not worked, ever honestly. When we graduated high school, we went straight to college. She met her boyfriend in college and once she graduated, became a stay-at-home girlfriend until she became his wife. I have known for a while that my sister has been attempting to become pregnant unsuccessfully. She has experienced a single miscarriage and has been unable to become pregnant again after thousands and thousands of dollars being on IVF and pretty much anything they could do because she wanted to experience pregnancy. After five years of no success, they have started to discuss other options. My sister isn't interested in adoption and is very adamant having a child that has both of their DNA, her words not mine. About three weeks ago, she came to my house and we were hanging out as we usually do, just chatting and watching Modern Family. She told me she had a serious question and needed to ask me while she still had her nerves. It scared me, but she asked if I could be her surrogate. I was frozen for a second and asked what she meant. She told me that I know what a surrogate was she needed me to be her surrogate. I expressed that she knew that I wasn't interested in having children. This could definitely be due how we came into the world, but I'll be honest and say I have never found the thought of having children appealing in any way. I told her that I would have zero issue with donating my eggs to her. However many she needed, she could have them all, but I could not carry her child. Upon hearing that, she became so angry. Her face was so red, and she was just yelling about how it's obvious and hateful I am, because this is a small task. I didn't want to bring it to her attention that she has always spoke about having more than four kids. Would the expectation be for me to do this every time? I don't know, I'm starting to feel so bad. She ended up telling me that if I couldn't do this one thing for her, how could I ever call my good of her sister? Um, she broke a picture of us I have sitting on my mantle and stormed out. Since then, she's only texted me pictures of her diaries from when we were kids and all of their vision boards saying that I'm stopping her from creating a family for no reason and to think about the bigger picture. My boyfriend refuses to give me advice saying that it's my sister and he doesn't feel comfortable attempting to sway me in either direction because it's such a touchy subject. Honestly, this is the longest I've ever gone without communicating with my sister and I am seriously on the verge of giving in. Dulger, Ida for not wanting to be a surrogate for my identical twin sister. Eat it. I am reading all the comments and I want to say thank you so much. I feel so much better knowing I'm not the villain, but I would be lying if I said I am not leaning towards just doing it. This disconnect with my sister brings me immense discomfort in ways I cannot verbally express, but I see two frequent questions I want to answer to hopefully get different answers. Money my mother did not die of natural causes. It was provider error. My father sued the hospital and my sister, and I have sizable trust with that money. So money is not an issue for either of us, and her husband is financially well off as well. So not working for nine months or paying for the egg retrieval process that gets an issue in any way. It's more so her stubbornness for the baby to share our DNA and for one of us to be carrying it. Since we're identical, if she can't have a baby, how can I? Her lack of being able to have a child is due to a car accident we were in, which is also the source of the miscarriage she experienced. Due to her being in the front seat with our father, they took the brunt of the crash, unfortunately. So her body is now unable to carry a child and she has had extremely complications with egg retrieval. I'm not sure about the details of how that has gone wrong, just that it is not working and not an option. It is hard to get her to discuss non-viable options so I can gain a better understanding. Doctors will not allow me to be a surrogate due to me not having a child. Thank you so much for this information. We have family dinner this upcoming Thursday because we always watch football with our dads and significant others. I'm sure this topic will come up if she decides to attend and hoping I can bring this up to her update two days later. So I promised an update tomorrow, but my dad actually ended up calling me while I was hanging out and told me to come over for dinner yesterday night so we could talk. I want to start by saying thank you so much for all the comments and advice. Some of you were jerks to not only me, but my sister and boyfriend as well. I still appreciate the help. I didn't even ask about what when my dad called, I figured he had spoken to Stacy. Based on comments, I know you guys won't be happy, 
but I spoke with my boyfriend about where his head was if I were to go forward with it. He told me that he loved me and would support me through any and everything, but he would not continue to sit by why my sister made me feel like trash, and if I was doing this under coercion, he would not be able to support me, which I honestly completely understand. When we went over to my dad's for dinner, my sister and Bill were already there. I spoke to them both when we walked in, but only my sister replied. My Bill gave me the most disgusting look and greeted my boyfriend only. My dad sat us down at the table and there was just this awkward silence and tension I could cut with a butcher knife. He said, somebody talk, we need to get this resolved before the game tomorrow night. My dad loves football lol. I started off the conversation by telling her that I did some research and atop of my initial concerns I now had a few more and needed to know exactly what she needed from me. I first asked her what being a surrogate would look like, she just said, are you agreeing to it? When I told her no, I just needed more details, she broke down crying. I asked her if she knew that a doctor would deny me from being a surrogate given that I've never successfully carried a child a term, and she said she knew that, and she would just send my bill and I to his center of excellence. We can pretend we're a couple and once him successfully inseminated, then I would request a transfer from that provider to her OB slash gin for the continuation of care. My father intervened and said that asking me to do something a doctor wouldn't sign off on was a terrible way to attempt to begin motherhood. Mm -hmm. You could tell he wasn't on board with any of it, but didn't want to pick a side. He asked her why she was so uncomfortable with the idea of a surrogate. And that's when my bill interjected and said, don't try to berate my wife with these stupid questions. Talk to your selfish bitch of a daughter about why she can't help her sister. That immediately shifted the mood. My boyfriend started to yell at him for calling me a bitch, my dad told him he could not disrespect his daughters in his home. Everything just went up in flames. My sister was crying asking me to do her this favor practically begging. I told her that if I could trade places with her I would, but I was scared and just didn't want to die. I think that was the first time I had said that out loud ever. We couldn't get more solved after that, my dad asked my bill to leave because he couldn't himself and refused to apologize. When he was walking out my sister told him she would meet him in the car, asked me to come and talk to her on the porch, just the two of us. I went out with her and she apologized for her husband calling me a bitch, said that they were just on edge and it's been stressful. I told her that she shouldn't apologize for him and that we'd figure something out. She asked me to reconsider and just kept saying you don't get it, you don't understand. When I pressured her for more, she admitted that her in-laws made a cruel joke at one of their dinners recently about how she was a murderer. Referring to the child she lost, she said she asked him why he didn't stand up for her when they made the joke, and he said because it was true. He made some weird comments about her not being able to make up for it and how he was so excited to see what their child would look like and how he would never be able to look into a child and see pieces of them both, so she had the idea of me carrying the child and he was super on board. But the way she said it was like he planted a seed and she seems to believe it was her idea. She said she hadn't seen him that excited since the baby and she just needed my help to get everything back to normal. I tried to explain to her that nothing would ever be normal again and that what she was trying to do was the wrong thing. But he just started blaring the horn rushing her to the car and she said she'd call me later. I feel like I may lose my sister, but I now am not even willing to donate my eggs for her to have a baby with him. I took your guy's advice and looked up the egg donation process, and wow. Not at all what I expected. I want her to divorce him. I am never going to help her procreate with that man. I genuinely think I'd be a surrogate for her to be a single mom before I'd ever allow her to place his child in me or take my eggs to create a child with him. I had no clue that his family was pushing so much guilt onto her. I have literally been jumping at my phone every time it rings because I know she'll be calling soon and I'll have to tell her that. I'm terrified I'll lose my sister, but I can't and won't do this. Probably won't update anymore, but thanks for all the help. I'll probably create my own Reddit now because I'm kind of obsessed with the site LOL Smile.